Now, we have our final speaker of this session. And is it Wilhelmina? Wilhelmina, sorry. I'm going to nail your surname though because it's brown. I'm all over that. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Now, you, you're a very qualified person to be speaking here. Oh, no, don't laugh. It's serious. You've got lots of qualifications, including a, a master's in, in public health. But I think the, uh, the thing that I wanted to emphasise most when I get down to it, because I forgot in that wonderful conversation what I was going to say, was um, that you, you work with um, Central and, and uh, Eastern Sydney PHN, much better known as CESPN and much quicker to say. Um, and you're part of their, um, also part of the National PHN Mental Health Lived Experience Engagement um, Network. And um, I think that that's fantastic. So I think that you've got qualifications from all over the place in life and in academia to speak about this. And I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going on too long. I'm embarrassing you now, aren't I? Yeah, just a little bit, but that's yeah. okay. I will, I'll, I'll just stop and pass over to you because um, you're going to tell us about... Um, the, the title is While You Wait, Supporting GP and Consumer Engagement Whilst Waiting for Specialist Mental Health Services. Well, thanks for that kind introduction. And yeah, I think I agree with our earlier speaker. When you're hearing your bio read out, it is a bit like standard awkwardly during happy birthday. Um, so before we continue, I do want to acknowledge that we are meeting today on the lands of the Gadigal people and pay my respect to um, any First Nations people here and I also want to pay my respects to anybody with a lived experience of mental illness, whether you're a consumer, a carer, advocate. You have played an important role in shaping the healthcare systems that we all engage with, and I'm really proud to be walking alongside you in those journeys. So, warning to start with, I'm going to talk about two things which are a bit controversial. I'm going to talk about co-design, the C word, and I'm also going to mention the pandemic again. So um, please don't run away kicking and screaming, because what I really want to focus on today is about accessibility. I'm a project officer at Central and Eastern Sydney PHN, and this opportunity and this project to develop the GP conversation guide, the while you wait resources, came from a willingness to just have a go. And for me, that is really important. You might not be doing co-design perfectly, but you are at least giving it a go. And through ongoing evaluation, you can learn what you didn't get quite right and then continue to improve moving forward. So for a bit of context, primary health networks are very much about uh, the first services that you can access, your GPs, your allied health professionals. Um, and some of the community mental health services. And during the uh, pandemic, we were getting a number of different reports, whether it was from consumers, carers, or service providers, that um, there really was an increase in need for services and really big waiting times. And so we had to, as a PHN, explore what our role was going to be during this. And so in my role uh, helping with the joint regional plan, which is about addressing kind of those systemic barriers to mental health service provision. We're able to, you know, look at the data, which some of the uh, wonderful presenters today here have already talked about, about who's getting access, what screening's happening, and what's really happening on the ground. But we were also ha able to have those meaningful conversations. And it was through those conversations that we spoke with a number of GPs who identified the real gap being this waiting period. You had a mental health treatment plan, you made the referral and they had their first session booked in and then they had to wait for three months, six months. And in that time, there was a lot of hope built up and then the first session arrived and it didn't actually meet anybody's expectations. And so part of that was a lack of preparedness on everybody's part, the GP not sure how to support that client in that waiting period, the consumer not sure what to expect because they might have only had the experience of what they've seen on TV on what actually talk therapy was like. So it was then that we um, started some resource development. Uh, fortunately, we had a couple of mechanisms already in place, one of them being our Mental Health and Suicide Prevention Advisory Council. And on that group, we had 
GPs, mental health service providers, consumers and carers, all ready to go and trapped in regular online meetings, which I commandeered uh, for one of those, and we came up with a prototype, which was a conversation guide. It's just on a Word document, nothing fancy. Um, and that was the starting point. And um, we realised that, well, that's all well and good, but is this going to work? And so I was fortunate enough to reach out to the wonderful Kath Thornburn, who I believe presented on day one of this presentation. Um, as an academic, she's very much involved in the co-design space. And with her assistance, we ran prototype testing sessions. Um, so this was a chance, again, for consumers, carers and GPs to sit down and workshop what initial appointment would be like. Will this, use, this resource be useful? And um, based on their kind of conversations and um, the recognition that we needed to jazz things up a little bit, we then um, brought on a graphic designer to kind of finalise the resource. And um, the resource, as you can see uh, on the screen, was then uh, published on our website and it sat there for a year. I had a little bit of downtime and so I figured, is this actually being used? It's been sitting there for 12 months. What can we actually glean from this resource? And so my first step I thought was going to be really simple. I was going to reach out to our marketing team who looked after the website and just figure out how many clicks, how many downloads did we have? Um, this actually opened a can of worms and we realised for the 12 months that we weren't actually able to get downloads but only page visits. And on that page there were nine separate resources all for a variety of audiences. So really not helpful for us in actually getting a sense of who is using this. So we had to be creative. Um, and so that's when I started doing deep dives into the internet, um, which can be a scary place, but I was fortunate enough to be put in contact with one of our GPs who said, I'm part of this private group. There are a thousand GPs from across Australia and someone who's not involved in this project has actually linked to it. And um, there's now this whole conversation thread going about how you could use this resource. So that was, you know, a little bit of luck. So I was able to pull that information as well as the feedback we'd received because we'd included an email address on all of these resources asking for feedback. And so a basic thematic analysis, nothing fancy, we were able to conduct and so Looking at that real qualitative feedback, the messaging we got was that this would be really useful for people who are first starting out on their mental health journey. Um, and then one of my colleagues pointed out a fairly obvious gap, which I'm a little embarrassed about seeing as I'm here uh, today, which was, you haven't mentioned physical health at all in this resource. Um, and so it was at that stage where I once again commandeered my lovely colleagues at our Mental Health and Suicide Prevention Advisory Council and said, this has been raised, how would you like to have this conversation? And I think it's really important to note that we had a lot of very strong opinions when it came to this. We had consumers who were both for and against. We had a representative from the Butterfly Foundation who um, specialised in eating disorders and had concerns about how we were going to communicate this information. And so what was a one-off session ended up being a two-off session and then some interviews, uh, well, I call them interviews, they were more phone calls where I recorded the uh, conversation, again, thematic analysis, pulling out those really useful bits of information and created a whole new section on that first resource, which um, is now available on the website for version two now including uh, information on number of downloads received so that in a year's time, when I go through this evaluation process again, we'll really be able to have a look at that reach. Um, so for me, I think what this really summarised is about those principles of co-design. The fact that you need to be willing to collaborate respectively, empower people to have their own opinions and um, have those in a sensitive and safe environment with respect and openness and be willing to admit when you've got it wrong. And so I think one of our strengths as a PHN has been the fact that we do have these ongoing mechanisms where we can continue to gather feedback from people in our region and we can continue to build that into our quality improvement cycle. So 
To wrap up, I do want to say a massive thank you to everyone who's been involved. Some people, it was just a five-minute conversation on the lift. Other people contributed significantly more of their time, but all of them have helped shape this resource. And it is through that evaluation process that I think we've continued to improve this handout. And so the next phase for me, when I have some time, will be to continue to gather that information and really see how this is working in practice and if we can further refine. So I'll open up now for questions, but feel free to scan the QR code. It'll take you to the CESPN website and you just got to need to scroll down to the bottom to while you wait. Um, but I'm also really happy for anybody who uses the resource, who has a look at it today, who has any feedback, to please send through an email because for me, one of the strengths of Equally Well is around sharing information, knowledge and connectedness. And I'd like to be part of that journey moving forward. Thank you so much for a fantastic presentation. It really heartens me when I, I see real world um, quality improvement going on where people are really evaluating what they're doing, saying, can we do it better? Um, because unfortunately, in so many services, we just keep doing things the same way we've always done because that is the way we've always done it. Um, so we need much more um, improvement processes and, and reviews and using things like PDSA cycles. Were there any questions that we had? Yes, straight up. Carolyn, I'll just get you the mic. Hang on, I'll do my giraffe running impersonation again. Thanks, I think this is a great resource and it's a thing that GPs dearly need because waiting lists are getting longer and longer. Um, I'm just wondering whether you thought of sharing this with the Department of Health people who are doing the Head to Health website redesign because that's now they're trying to make that more kind of how to get help in the real world as opposed to just the digital world. And they've actually created a thing that says once you've done the quiz, you go, here's some stuff you could go to your GP. This is kind of really good homework that they could be given through that website as well. Have you had any talks with people about expanding it more widely like that? Uh, we haven't sp spoken directly with the team at Head to Health, but I think part of my ongoing work has been raising awareness, um, whether that's through the uh, online CPD events that we do do, so continuing professional development events, making sure that um, in all the housekeeping slides that information like this is made available, um, and just trying to get it on people's radar. So that is definitely a bit of homework for me to follow up with there. I'll try and connect you. That'd be good. Thanks. Great question, Carolyn, too. Um, be good to get that all connected. Were there any other questions that we had? Great. Thank you so much again. Really, really good stuff and um, great to see. Thank you. Another round of applause, please.